Hello, hello. Oh my goodness. It is good to see you. Okay, let me see here. We are live in the Meaning of Life Design Zoom room. Yay! <laughs> For the first time in 2024, Happy New Year. We are also live on Facebook on the Meaning of Life Designs Facebook page. And we are also live in the Meaning of Life Designs YouTube channel. So, Nancy, I know, was paying attention earlier when Marilyn and I were checking out how to do this whole streaming thing. <laughs> you would think that it would be easy. Actually, it was insanely easy. I was really nicely surprised. So. For everybody in the you in the Zoom room, you guys have the ability to ask questions and we can chat live. For everybody who is watching us live on Facebook, I do actually have an eye on the chat, maybe. Okay, I do now. <laughs> I do now have an eye on the chat, but um everyone in the you in, in the Zoom room, you guys can raise your hand if you have a specific question about the project that you're working on. And I would love to have a chat with you. I have a couple of things that I wanted to share with you before we jump into any questions that you guys may have. Let's see, which one shall I start out with? I know we are after Christmas, but it turns out we have not had a Zoom call. So I could show you the 2023 Christmas ornaments. And so I have them right here. I have them stacked up um, to show you that it actually works really well for um, storing them. 16 right there. There's the, the little guys right there. We had fun doing this. I see Ruth on, um, on the little bar above on the screen here. And I see her smiling because we were talking about designing Christmas trees in the Digitizing and Design Masterclass Plus. This, um, actually this idea had come together before we had that conversation, but it changed as a result of that conversation. So anyway, we took some of our favorite Christmas songs and put them onto what I call little Christmas trees. You can call them whatever you would like. Um, they have a different back. So we have a song on the front and we have either snowflakes on the back or we have Christmas lights decorating the tree. You can actually hang them. If you put a little um, loop through the top, you could literally hang them on your tree. Although I am envisioning them more so as table decorations for your Christmas feast or just dotted around the living room. I was actually really fascinated. I went out for lunch with a friend. Um, I think it was just after Christmas and they had the same cone shaped trees all the way along the, um, what do you call them? Um, when you're sitting in booths, that's it, all the way along the booth separator, let's say. So these guys, one of the things I actually really love about them is if you have a hoop that's big enough to stitch it in one shot, once you got the thing in the hoop, the entire thing is in one color. So you can set it stitching and walk away come back at the end and pop the facing on. There's one seam to be stitched and they actually go together really fast. And we did film a little video for how to do that. Um, so six of our favorite songs, we came up with a couple of other different ideas that we couldn't resist. Three different sizes, a bit late for this year, but there is plenty of time between now and Christmas 2024. So <laughs> this is one of those times when you have no excuses. We've given you an entire year to get ready. Okay, so in the time between Christmas and New Year, I 
spent some time doing some stitching and filming a video so that you guys can see how it goes together. I think that went live in the portal um, in the last over the last couple of days. If you have already purchased the Peace Reef, we finally got the complete thing stitched up with the dove ring. I love how it turned out. So we previously had the holly ring and you could put either a, a dove in the center or the poinsettia. We have five different dove designs. I love how they kind of sort of look like they're just flying around. Although this guy, I have to say, he still reminds me of a phoenix. Um, phoenix rising from the ashes or whatever it is that the phoenix does. Um, actually goes together pretty straightforwardly. Um, and as I said, we've got the videos showing how to do it. We actually have, let me see if I can show you guys. I put the three-dimensional poinsettia in the center here. And that too goes together pretty straightforwardly, stitching up the petals first on water-soluble stabilizer, two sets of petals. Um, and then there's the applique petals in the background there. They, I, I just love the way these petals look when they are actually stitching in the hoop. They kind of lift off and it, it's just so much fun to see it all coming together. So if you already have purchased the Peace Reef, then we will be getting the instructions on specifically how to create this. It is a 30 and 30, and I think I added a half an inch for the binding. Uh, so 30 and a half inch diameter circle. Um, I had a ton of fun with the binding. I couldn't decide which color to use. So I figured, well, let's go with a candy cane kind of look. So we also did a quick video on how that all went together. Um, the back is actually just a solid plain piece of fabric. There's batting or an extra piece of batting under here and backing fabric um, literally fused on. Not everything has to be quilted all the way through. This is not exactly a quilt that you're going to be snuggling with. It's more of a decoration, whether you put it on your table or have it as a wall hanging. Um, either way, um, somebody suggested to me that this, uh, with the three-dimensional aspect to it, would actually be really very pretty if we could put a candle in there um, as the centerpiece on your table. So... Tons of ideas. If you've already purchased the Peace Reef, we'll be getting the instructions, as I just said, um, to you by next week. I got to look over them and make sure that everything is in order. If you haven't purchased it and you're in love with this, now would be a really uh, really good time to pop over to meaningalifedesigns.com and hop into the design store and make your purchase because the price will be going up as soon as we have those instructions in there. Okay, so let me see. I would actually love to know. We haven't done this in quite a while. I would love to know where everybody is calling in from. And I would love to hear one word to describe your Christmas and New Year. If you can come up with that one word. I see Elspeth smiling with it thinking look on her face for that. <laughs> I, I actually should probably have thought about this, uh, my answer to this question before, because now I'm going to have that same, hmm, I have absolutely no idea what my word would be for this Christmas. Um, let, let's see, what would it be? Quiet. I think quiet would be a good word for our Christmas here. We actually didn't celebrate Christmas until Wednesday following. Um, both of the girls worked. I had no idea that the sons played basketball at the Footprint Center in downtown Phoenix on Christmas Day evening. And Jasmine is an intern down there. And so she got to go hang out with a bunch of basketball fans and watch part of the game on Christmas Day evening. And Heather is an EMT over in Tucson. She was working Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and Boxing Day. Hence, it's not having our family celebration till the following Wednesday. Okay, let me have a quick look here. 
I'm liking some of your words. Gail in Australia. Yay, Gail. I'm glad that you made it today and happy Saturday. I hope all is well on Saturday in the future. Um, Dawn, what kind of fusible did we use for the backing? So I actually put fusible fleece, um, Pelon fusible fleece with, a, um, um, let's see, just fusible webbing between the fusible fleece and the back. So Let's see. Starting on the top, I'm going to pull it up here. So starting on the top, we've got background fabric, sitting on a layer of batting, sitting on a layer of stabilizer, which had all of our markings on. There was a piece of stabilizer in the hoop for every hooping, and the majority of that got torn away um, after each hooping, although it still is underneath all of the applique shapes. Once we'd done all of the stitching, the stable, the layer of stabilizer came away as much as possible from around the outside of the appliques. Now, that that actually was not a whole lot of stabilizer coming away. I left it um, under most of the quilting motifs. Um, so th there's a fair amount of stabilizer in here. So then fusible fleece, so Palon fusible fleece went on the other side and then fusible webbing back fabric. So the backing fabric had fusible webbing. Heat and bond light is my favorite. So that's um, that's what went in there. It's actually all things considered, given that there is quite a lot of stuff in there, it is actually kind of nice and soft. We um, I was contemplating putting two layers of batting, but I wanted to have the second layer actually fused to the top which is why I went with a fusible fleece instead of that extra layer of batting. Okay, let's see. Dottie in New Jersey. Chantelle and Augusta Quiet was for her too. Nancy in North Carolina, New Christmas and New Year were fantastic. Nancy, I love that. That is an awesome word. Jody in Michigan, a new grandson. That is pretty remarkable too. Polly in Connecticut, joyous. I love that. Marilyn in show were lovely, yes. And um, Dottie added family for her word. Wendy in Alberta, Canada, also quiet. Leah, peaceful. Teresa's in British Columbia. Maureen in Moore, Oklahoma, satisfying. These are beautiful words. Judy up in... Um, British Columbia, great family time. Yes, Margaret, calm. That's not what. No, that's not a word actually that you really associate with the Christmas season for the most part. Um, but I love that one. Gail, reflective as I lost my sister-in-law a couple of months before Christmas. It was a time for memories. Hmm, that's beautiful, Gail. I'm glad that you were able to do that reflection. Sometimes that can be really helpful. Brigitte in Hamburg, Germany, cozy with family. I love that. Catherine in Nashua, New Hampshire, quiet. Ruth in California, sweet. I love that word too. Beautiful. Teresa, also up in British Columbia. Her word is green. Interesting. Let's see. Vicky. In southwestern Ohio, um, with part of the family, very enjoyable, happy, and joyful. Beautiful. Gloria in New York, also joy for her word. Cindy in Ohio, three-year-old grandson. I imagine there is a fair amount of energy and love and laughter all up around with the grandson. Liz in North Carolina, difficult. Liz, I hope that improves for you. I hope it wasn't too, too challenging. Jan in London, Ontario, crazy busy. Joe, um, let's see, Joe says, congrats, Jody, he deserves a Woodland Friends quilt. Yes, perfect idea for newborn and three-year-old grandsons. Janet up in Canada, family daughter home from Belize and brother home from Milwaukee. Good family gathering there. 
Lonnie in Washington, great. That's too a good word. Betsy in Massachusetts, coming. Let's see, Karen in B um, BC, laughter with friends. Bonnie, warm and wonderful. Beautiful. I am so happy that nearly everybody is just having a peaceful, quiet, joyful family time. That um, kind of makes my heart sing to hear that. Okay. And we have a couple of listeners in on YouTube. Zaini in Minnesota, also joyful. Diana in Michigan, peaceful. So beautiful. Now then, let me see my questions list. I don't see Kathy here, but I'd love for us all to send out a little bit of warm fuzzes and a prayer for Kathy. She said she had brain surgery in 2023 and has been recovering and she's working on the basics and she's ready to get back into something. So Kathy, I hope you will make it onto our, one of our live Zoom calls soon. And if not, jump into our Facebook group. You'll find a ton of encouragement. And for those of you, um, I don't know, Kathy, if you know or not, but we've been through the brain surgery thing here in the Vedla family. It's been, let's see, I think seven years since Heather had her brain surgery in March of 2016, and she turned 22 yesterday. That that was quite amazing. Jazzy and I drove over to Tucson and took her out for dinner for this 22nd birthday. Okay, let's see. Polly, is Polly here? Holly, I am going to come and ask you to unmute here. I'm here. I'm here. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm excited. So, you said, um, so you want to buy the Christmas ornament collection, and you might have questions, um, and you're also very new. So, Correct. welcome to our community you will find that we have some of the nicest people on the planet that come to hang out every other Friday in the Meaning of Life Design Zoom room. And we also have a fantastic group of people in our Facebook page, in, in, in our Meaning of Life Designs Facebook group. So if you have questions at any point, jump into the Facebook group and lots of people will jump in and offer assistance. And we got lots of people using the baby lock machines. So if you're brand new to your machine, you'll also be able to find lots of help there. Great, thank you. So do you did you come up with any questions? I did. Um, do you want me to talk or, or send it as a chat? Talk right now. That's why we're okay. here. That's okay. what I Thank love you. about. I, I so appreciate it. I I love your website and your designs. And I'm I'm fairly new to applique and uh, applique as far as embroidery goes. I have come from a long background of quilting, but since I got my embroidery machine, I'm like pretty addicted. And um, so I decided <laughs> it's to funny how that happens, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, wow, I don't know if I'll ever make like a big, huge, humongous quilt ever again. It's but unless it's an app, unless it's an embroidered quilt. Uh, but um, I, I bought the Christmas ornaments and um, and I I already my issue is more technology than anything. I wasn't quite sure how to print the template in order to do that process um, because I don't know it I don't know anything about SVG files and I don't have the Bernina um, the Bernina whatever the that tool the yeah that tool. would you that would require you to have a Bernina embroidery machine so I'm well, gonna say completely ignore that part. Well, I'm a little crazy and I do have, I have a, both a baby lock and a Bernina. Right now my Bernina is okay. doing, my, my Bernina is doing a, ma a major project. So I'm using this baby lock for my 
Zooms with you to do some smaller things like these ornaments and, and just to learn your process and, 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 and pick your brain. <laughs> okay. Now let, um, so to clarify, which Christmas ornaments? So the 2021, I, I, I bought that okay. collection and okay. I do, and I put uh, a couple of the designs of the, I put like a couple of the, um, the designs of the freestanding ornaments into the baby lock. So there's a few designs in there. I just, I don't know how to print the correct size template. Okay. So you'll be using the printable templates. Correct. And we put a red square in the center of every page so that you can make sure that your printer is printing at the correct size. Okay. So when you open the printable templates document, it's a PDF. Yeah. And it depends how you've got your computer set up as to which application will actually open. If you have Adobe Reader, then it more than likely will actually open up in that. Okay. So the key when you come to say print or do control P, then you will see that. Um, you've got various options as far as sizing goes. Ah, uh, yes. Print out. And the default seems to be scale to fit. In okay. which case, you'll probably come up when you actually hit print, the red square is going to be smaller than six inches. Mm -hmm. Is that what happened for you? Yes. Yeah, it so, just wanted it just wanted to print the page with all all three of the um, designs because you have a printable template sheet for the circles, the points, and the tall. And yes. I'm, I, my printer just wanted to print that sheet with all three of those on it. Okay. Um, Which would give me tiny, tiny, tiny um, designs on the pages. Let me share my screen one second. I've just pulled up the document. So let me just pop that over there. So is this the page that you're seeing? Oh no, where is that is not the page I'm seeing. Okay. okay. I'm I'm looking at the page that was part that was included in your applique preparation instructions. Okay, that's not the page that you want. <laughs> So there you go. So there you go. Okay. okay. Um, so when you when you download the Christmas ornament collection, you're either going to be downloading the three zip files, which will give you a cutting folder, a designs folder, and an instructions folder. Correct. Or if you click on the Dropbox link, then you can download directly into your Dropbox. Um, either way, you'll end up with these three folders. Okay. Yes. Designs is the pr probably the easiest one to take a look at first. This is where you're going to find the actual designs to plug into your embroidery machine. So we've we split them up so you can use them as appliques. We've got them set on mug rugs. We've got them set on on point blocks, on square blocks, and as standalone. Now, which you you are stitching up the standalone ornaments? Correct. Okay, so if we pop in there, you've got the different formats. So on your baby lock, you'd be using the PEZ designs. Correct. So you can just literally copy and paste those guys onto a USB stick and pop that into your embroidery machine. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's pop back up here. We've also got the instructions folder. And we've got the applique preparation. Yep. We've got the actual instructions, how, how to go about doing it. And oh. we've got the thread charts. Our supply list is pretty much the same from one design collection to the next. It's the, 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 the things that we love to use. So I love Oracle thread um, up on top. You can use your own favorite embroidery thread, whichever you like. Um, things like needles. Titanium top stitch, um, superior titanium top stitch. Let me just pop this up. Um, um, 
Let's see, bobbin thread superior bottom line number 61910 is what I prefer to use. The stabilizer that we prefer to use. Um, so if you're use, um, stitching as applique, then you're gonna use a medium weight tearaway. These are our two favorites. Um, since you're doing the standalone projects, then you're going to need the water soluble stabilizer. So either of these two, um, although I would also add on there OSD Aquamesh, mm -hmm. which is a, a kind of a mesh water-based stabilizer. Our favorite fusible webbing, the favorite batting that we like. Um, so all, all kinds of different things. That is pretty similar from one project to the next. Let's just pop back here. So in the applique preparation, let's... X that out, then, um, so you either can use the printable templates or the SVG files or the Bonina cutwork, depending on the tools that you have available for cutting. Um, if you are gonna use the, in, uh, the SVG options, then there are various different SVG files that you can use. We also provide FCM files if you have a brother scan and cut, so you can use the FCM files directly. Um, and then the printable templates, um, I, th these, these are the ones that you're, you've been looking at, I'm assuming. Yes, it is, yes. Okay, so apparently, we decided to only put one of each on the one page, but these are the life-size templates that you will need. So this is where you'll come and control P will give up the print, um, the print dialogue. It typically is going to have either fit or shrink to fit as the default option. If you've never printed something at 100% before. Okay. So you wanna make sure that you either go actual size or better yet, custom scale and actually specify 100%. Okay. Where are you getting this page? That's what I, I can't seem to get my this head around. This page is in the cutting folder and it is right here. 2021 Christmas Ornament Collection Printable Templates. Okay, that's great. That's all I needed to know. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, um, I was there, just there not, is... I wasn't, I wasn't going deep enough into getting information. Yeah, have a good look in every single folder. Yes. Um, for the most part, we endeavor to put things in the same place. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, just in case, have a good look around. One thing that I will say that we discovered last year about printing um, printing anything and making sure that it has it that it does come up at hundred percent and that this square here is going to measure six inches, you need to be using your actual brand printer driver. So if you print this, and this red square is not measuring exactly six inches, check your printer driver. If you're using the generic Windows driver, we've noticed that that typically will not print accurately at 100%. Okay. So just make sure that you use the um, your actual brand printer driver. Okay? Yep, thank you so much. You are welcome. Is there anything else that I can help you with um, so that you can get be successful in stitching? Uh, for these ornaments, I, I don't think so. I have never, um, I've never, I've done a few freestanding lace ornaments, but not, not applique freestanding ornaments. So this is a whole different um, ball game for me. And I'm really excited because I think they're just beautiful. Um, and I, I like, I like the idea of doing them in using the aqua mesh and then just just dabbing it away on the edges. Yes. Um, yes. And I also I noticed that your backing, the back piece is double fabric. 
fused to get fused with heat and bond light. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. There's, there's actually, I was just going to pull up um, the instructions. I can't remember for these guys if we were, that's not the right one. Um. One of the things that we started doing last year when we're stitching anything, whether it's the freestanding ornaments or the coasters, uh, where we're stitching, actually, I don't know that we stitched the coasters right onto, um, onto the water soluble, but anytime we've been working on the water soluble stabilizer, where we've taken to cutting the applique shape out of stabilizer, regular tearaway stabilizer as well. Oh. Now, the reason for that, and we did this um, for the petals on the, mm -hmm. on, on the poinsettia. These are stitched out pretty much exactly the same way that the Christmas ornaments are. Okay. So we put um, the Aquamesh Plus in the hoop. Yes. And then we stitch the placement line that shows where to position the applique shape. Mm -hmm. It Before positioning the pre-cut applique shape, we will also cut a piece of medium weight tearaway stabilizer using the same applique shape. Fuse that in place first on top of the water soluble stabilizer and then put the fabric on the top of it. Is that to just make the ornament have more body or be stiffer? Yes, yes. Okay. And it, it helps with the stitching. Ah. Uh, it, what, what we've found is that the water-soluble stabilizer by itself has a tendency to kind of shrink everything in yes. when you're stitching, right? So if you put that layer of medium weight tearaway stabilizer down first underneath the fabric, then you'll get a much nicer quality of stitching. Okay. Okay. Yep. Got it. Medium weight. And medium with, weight tearaway. Yes. So okay. if you have the OESD ultra clean and tear, that will work just beautifully. So prepare it as you would a fabric applique shape, put some fusible webbing on the back of it, cut your shapes out, fuse it in place first, then fuse the applique fabric on the top of it. Yep, got it, okay. Um, let's see. Yes, we, we, were, we weren't actually doing that in 2021 when these guys were released, but we've Not, discovered yeah. that it actually gives us a much nicer result. I'm just popping through the... Um, Tearaway. Now, are is the tearaway shape that you're cutting? Um, do you are you backing that with um, heat and bond also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have aquamesh in the hoop. Yep. You'll have stabilizer that like ultra clean and tear backed with heat and bond cut as your applique shape that goes down first and then fabric backed with heat and bond cut your applique shape that goes down second and then you start your stitch your design stitching and then you start doing the stitching for the design yes got it okay cool thank you you're welcome tear away with One of these days, we'll figure out a way that we can put our improved wisdom into our older design collections. <laughs> well, that's, that's why these, these Zoom meetings are awesome, right? Absolutely. Yes. And there's a whole bunch of wisdom here, too. And, well, and... and and there's so and there's new products that are coming out, I, you know, that that are you have to play with. Um, I, I did one applique, uh, class and I, I, I've already forgotten how I used it, but we used some, an OESD product called applique fuse and fix. And I'm like, okay, so that's a whole nother 
whole nother ball game there. It's uh, it's an interesting product, but I I can't even re it was it was uh, you know too long ago, like last year, and I've already forgotten how I applied it in the project. <laughs> it's essentially if it's the one that I'm thinking of, it's essentially the same as the heat and bond. It's a fusible webbing. That's what I think too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so uh, much, Sarah. This was very helpful. I appreciate it. You are welcome, Polly. It's so nice to have you in our community. Yeah, I'm excited. I will chat with you later. Yeah. And and last, my last comment is um, the cone trees. My family, we have a 300 acre Christmas tree farm here in Connecticut. So wow. I, am def I am definitely doing those cone ornaments because everybody in my family is going to love getting those. Beautiful. I can't yeah. wait to see them when you've stitched them out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Who knew that is a large Christmas tree space. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see. We are, let me just check my questions list down here. We are open for questions. Holly was um, the main one. So if you are working on a Meaning of Life Designs project and there is something that you would love to get clarified, um, just like Polly did, then now is the time to ask away. Otherwise, we will have a very silent meeting because these meetings are for you guys to come with your questions. And you can either pop something in the chat or you can raise your mechanical hand. Or if I pop into gallery view and you're like, I don't know how to raise my mechanical hand, you can wave at me, kind of like that. And I will hopefully spot you. And I'm not immune to um, coming, at, <laughs> coming and just chatting with anybody. Judy, I see your hand was waving just there. Coming to ask you to unmute. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Got a little cold going on here. So uh -oh. my voice is a little raspy. Yeah. So um had family, 12 people here for the holidays for two weeks. And two of the grandsons had cold. So I kind of expected it. So anyway. Wow. Well, yeah. I see your family photos on the wall behind you. They're beautiful. Yeah, um, that's the whole family. And the one, wow. I'm going to point, the one right there is uh -huh. graduating um, this year. So I'm heading to his house on Wednesday. Now, is his... he the one that is taking over your embroidery machine? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sure there'll be um, cleaning going on when I get there. And I'm going to teach him how to do that. So <laughs> hopefully it's not too bad. He's been sewing on jean uh, material. So yikes. So anyway, I'm getting um, I'm getting the joy. My blocks ready to um, take to her house and sew them together. Quilt them. I have several yet to quilt. Okay. And then, um, but I, I just saw the sample. I didn't do the sample, but on the sample, you have the little, um, the, the binding and then you have that little what do you call that again the piping yeah piping yeah okay yeah. so is that the same thing as what we're doing in the quilt too the piping um you can put the no hands pipe binding around the outside edge yes okay all right so okay. the only thing that i did differently actually so we did we finally got the alternative colorway which had gone very silent throughout the year. Cass was busy stitching it and um, we, we got a little bit behind. So it was a bit of a mad rush at the end. So we now have the two versions. We've just getting this other one um, photographed, but for the second colorway, we had the same background color on all of the blocks and we put a solid line for the piping, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. For the other version, we actually had the piping. Um, we, we had a different color piping depending on which block it was up against. Right. Okay. So cut, cut your piping fabric the same size as your block plus, a, um, let's see, um, plus a half inch extra for your seam allowance and cut the pieces on the 45 degrees so that you've got a diagonal join. Okay. Um, and then add a little bit of extra to the ends of the piping that are on the corners of the quilt. Okay, I can't remember too. Did you put directions out for that or not? Um, we have a class and give, give me one second. Um, did you do Sunshine Cove or Simply Dreaming or Yellow Submarine? I did Simply Dream. Wait, did I do Simply Dreaming? Yes. That's with the little hearts around. Simply yeah, you yeah. should have. And I'm just checking right now. You should have the no hands pipe binding class actually yes. in your library. I do. Yes, I do. Okay. I do. So yeah, yeah, just follow follow those instructions. Okay. And then another thing that I was thinking about too, because I got um, I got the directions out on how to trim all the blocks and then how to um cut all the sashing. So I was thinking, well, maybe tomorrow I'll cut I'll cut all the sashing. Am I mm -hmm. going to be safe to do that all, or should I wait on that? Um, as long as you're accurate with your cutting, there's absolutely no reason why you can't cut it now. Okay. Because no I was reason. thinking you put like a extra, a good extra fabric behind. We should be all, um, the blocks should be okay as far as. You know, yeah, um, the blocks we, the blocks should be fine. I'm actually <laughs> I don't know whether to be surprised or not that nobody so far has noticed that the finished size of each block doesn't match the size of the background that you started with plus the borders that we added. So the and the reason for that is because of the shrinkage when you quilt each of the blocks, right? Yep. I think everybody knows that if you have like a twin size quilt, which this one basically finishes up at Mel's Practical Joy, then the whole thing is going to be smaller by the time you've quilted it. And the same is true, even though we're starting with the little blocks, right? Right. So as long as you cut them exactly the size that we're saying to cut them, um, the sashing will match that. Um, unless you make a mistake with your cutting. Okay. You okay. should be just the, the biggest block. I made a mistake on the back, the back fabric. I'm like, you got to be kidding. So I quick called the company and I said, <laughs> you guys, I got to have some more material. And I said, do you have any left? And they're like, yeah, we got 10 yards. I'm like, okay, cool. So they quick sent me two yards. I got them before Christmas. So I just basted that one all together. So that was the last block I had to baste. Now I'm going to fold them up and try not to fold them much and put them in my big suitcase. Try so. rolling them if you're traveling with them. Okay. You know, I was thinking about that. So roll them all up together and throw them in my suitcase. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'll if you that. have, um, if you have any, that you're using 20 inch rolls as stabilizer, right? Yes. So if you have any stabilizer tubes, yes, I do. Use, use those to wrap the blocks around them. Okay, I'll do so, so that. So that they and that that way they won't get squashed. Okay. And yep. you'll have um you'll you'll minimize the creasing and what have you that goes on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right? good. Good idea. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I hope your cold is going to be disappearing really soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't expect this. I haven't had a cold for two and a half weeks. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And, you know, this is so crazy, too. 
So yesterday, well, the night before I didn't get any sleep. And yesterday my nose was plugged to, I've never had this before. So I go on YouTube. I'm like, how do you unplug a stuffed nose? Well, let me tell you, if you guys <laughs> ever have it, look it up because these people are amazing. I did like two of the things that they said. And one was like putting your, um, putting your two, you take your two fingers and you start up by your nose and you just rub it down like this and for 30 seconds. And it actually opens up your sinuses like you wouldn't believe. And that took care of my stuffed nose. <laughs> as good gross as that sounds, but yeah, good to know. Good to, good know. to know. Yeah. So yeah. where were those remedies when we were <laughs> years ago? You know, I got the Vicks out and oh my gosh, crazy. Yeah. Well, let's hope it's all gone soon. Yes. For sure. Later, Judy. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Janet, you have your hand raised. Coming to ask you to unmute here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, I don't know. I am very, very behind in, in my lovely quilt. But anyway, this is the joy. Quilt well, joy. Okay. okay. Block number three, cutting out the binding or the, uh, you know, the borders. Uh-huh. Confusion plus to me. <laughs> because the instructions, I'm looking at the instructions here. And I, I cut, I cut blush down here, just for instance. Okay. So it says, cut one piece of width of fabric at three and a quarter inches. Then it says cut four pieces, two and a quarter by three and quarter. But block Hang three, tight, three Let's and a half it to this screen so that we can actually have a look at it. Okay. Let's see. Um, so you're looking at the block three, how to stitch it? Yeah. Okay. Hang tight. One second. Popped up on my big screen. Let's bring it down onto the little screen. Okay. So, which page are you on? Page three. Page three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I've cut blush. Okay. Blush. Okay. Right there. Yeah, that's it. So, in okay. the, you're supposed to be, for block three, you're supposed to cut three and a half inch triangle corner. But the pieces that I cut has been three and a quarter, one piece with the fabric, three and a quarter. Do I cut so, that? Am I okay. Cut? Sorry. So um, there are three sizes of triangles that you're going to stitch up, right? We've got two inch triangles and by Two, two inch wide, we've got two and a half inch wide, and we've got three and a half inch wide. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. The size of the pieces is not going to be three and a half inches or two and a half by or two for the corners. It's not going to be. No. Um, the for the backgrounds, yes. It there will be a relationship. So for um so for the two inch triangle backgrounds you can see we've got two and a half inches by two and a half inches for the size yes. of the piece so that's your two inches with a half inch seam allowance okay right uh -huh. the two and a half inch triangle backgrounds let me see if we just then we've got three inches by two and a half inches so this three inches wide is your two and a half inches plus your half inch seam allowance. Okay. And the three and a half inch triangle background, you've got four inches wide. So three okay. and a half inches plus your half inch, right? So those are for the backgrounds. When it comes to the corners, those are weird size pieces that don't really have any relationship to the sizes that you've got here for the backgrounds or for the triangle 
the size of the, the actual blocks. So when you're seeing here four pieces, two and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches, that's how big the corners need to be in order to create that size triangle. I right. think it's okay. a case of you potentially just have to go with the flow, cut the pieces, and then you'll see how they fit. Let me actually have a look down at the diagrams in a little bit. Um, so when you come to stitch, we've actually been, um, let's see, this. these diagrams are for the two inch wide finished blocks, right? Yes. So each of these squares is a placement line to show you where to put the background fabric, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna pop your bits of tape on so that you can hold the background fabric in place. Right. Then it's going to stitch these placement lines. Right. Right. And then you're going to put the corner pieces down. Okay. Right? So mm -hmm. th this corner piece here is going to sit across this corner here. The next step is when it's actually stitching that seam line there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Can you see the seam line here? Yes. Yes, I do. Right, so then we actually, you've got your seam line there. Yes. Then once the next step Hold is it. you flip that, you, you fold it into position. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have your placement line for the second corner. Mm -hmm. You're going to place your fabric right side down. All right. You're going to stitch that seam line. Mm -hmm. Then. Um, Fold it back. Well, actually, at, at that point, you've got all of the seam lines stitched. So we're actually going to take everything out of the hoop and trim everything. So before you flip that over, you're actually going to trim that seam. So you're okay. going from this to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then you can actually refold this guy down so that you can trim the seam allowance under there. And then fold them both out. So it ends up looking like this. Yes. And then you're going to trim it to the actual size it's going to be to fit into the block. Okay. So this piece here, these... The, the bits that I'm calling the triangle corners, they're kind of almost, they're, they're actually very precisely um, precisely sized, but they're kind of, from your point of view, they're pretty randomly sized. Okay. Does that make sense, Janet? Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you just... Cut the pieces. Right. Yeah, cut the pieces at the size that they're specified. Okay. Let's zoom back in again a little bit here so we can find it. So cut cut your triangle corners the size that they're specified. Okay. And right. and and just put them in place and know that I specified those sizes pretty exactly so that they will fit. And you can end up with your um you can end up with your pieced triangle blocks. Okay. They're kind of sort of um they're, they're kind of sort of flying geese blocks. They're a little bit different in that we needed um that they're in, in a traditional tr tr um flying geese block, you've got a, a 45 degree angle here and a 45 degree angle here. And so you can use squares on the corners. Okay. But because these guys are not traditional, the size 
for these pieces is a little different. Right on. Okay. That's good. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. And pop into the Facebook group if you're still challenged okay. between now and our next call. Because there's lots of people who have stitched these guys up. Were you in the Joy Club? Did Yes, you came to our Zooms, right? Yeah. 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 So make sure you check out um, the Block 3 Joy Club recording as yeah, well. Because okay. we talked about this quite a lot there. Yeah, okay. No, I just I just have an awful time getting to sew. That's the big thing. And I just get so frustrated. I'm so far behind. Well, but, you know, the, we're can, can we get rid of the being behind part? There's <laughs> people who only just started last week. Okay. So I know that you're seeing in the Facebook group pictures of finished quilts, which yeah. is awesome and wonderful. But there's literally somebody who started last week. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so you're not behind in comparison with them. And 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 Judy too. You know, Judy has still got some of her blocks to piece or to quilt. Sure. Who we were talking to just a few minutes ago. So no such thing as behind. But whatever we can do to help you, we're here. Okay. Now let's and if you permission to go into your sewing room and shut the door so that nobody can come and bother you then you got it <laughs> thank you i'm gonna tell you i'm going away for for three weeks starting in the middle of january so i won't be around for a while but so i won't well, be getting anything time. done have a good time wherever you are <laughs> and we'll see you when you get back <laughs> thank you all right you're thanks welcome. again sarah happy new oh, year you're welcome Thank you, and to you. Good to see you, Thanks. Janet. Thanks. <laughs> okay, Vicki, you are up next. Come to ask you to unmute. Hello. We have Hello. We were working on your doves from the piece wreath. And we can okay. scan and cut. Yep. For some reason, they didn't want to cover when we stitched around them. Did we do something? Did we not get our cut right? You okay? So you're using the scan and cut. Did you use the SVG files or did you use the FCM files? SP, um, F FCM because they were closer. Some well, we try. I think we tried both because you should be able to. So if you use the SVG files directly in your scan and cut, I'm not actually even sure if you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, that might be your problem because they we put a 12 inch square around the outside of all of our SVG files so that we have a very specific guideline to make sure that everything is the right size. Yeah. But if you sure. use that directly in the scan and cut, then it would have shrunk it a little bit. Which is why okay. if you use the FCM files, we get a better, get cut. A better cut. You've got to get back a better cut because we've already we've we've done everything that you need to do to the SVG file so that it is the correct size. Okay. I I, 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 I thought we I used thought we FCM, used to, but I couldn't swear to it. It was a couple months ago. I have an echo, sorry. I don't know what I did. That's okay. If yeah, it's entirely possible that you would have used the SVG files. I when, try to use native files because the machines always perform better. Yeah. Well, if you do, when you use your scan and cut, do you ever, do you always go directly to the machine or do you go through the canvas workspace? To Is the it, machine. I don't go through canvas workspace. Okay, so then make absolutely sure that you use the FCM files. Yes. So I'm usually going from Floriani software or directly from like your file. Okay, yeah, the the FCM files you can use directly out of the download into your scan and cut. Yeah. But they should be exactly the right size. The only reason I could think of that they wouldn't be is if you'd use the SVG files directly. I'll have to go back and double check that. It's been a couple months because it was before Christmas. 
It's one of those okay. that come out. Okay. Yeah. Cause these guys on on here were all cut using the scan and cut and they right. fit exactly. Because I went back and checked just and I think it was eleven twenty two when we loaded the downloaded the files and it still had the same date. Yeah, the 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 SVG I double checked to make sure. Changed. Okay. The only other thing, um which version, which format of the embroidery designs are you using? PES. The PES. Do you use those straight out of the download, or have you taken them through any software? I don't take them through software. So directly out of the download. I might look at them in the software um, to see how they're going to stitch out before mm -hmm. I put them in the machine, but I don't make any changes. Not okay. Changes. Yeah, because the I mean the chances of you are. Um, Increasing the size of the design is, I would hope, fairly remote. Yes, because you don't save. Right. So I'm thinking yes. you, it, it sounds mostly, most probably that you used SVG files instead of the FCM files. Got in too big of a hurry, didn't I? <laughs> it's exciting stuff, this getting a new design collection. And red, yes, it red is. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Let me see. Vicky, you disappeared on me. Zoom did a little. Okay, let's see. There we go. Liz, you are up next. Coming to ask you to unmute. Hello. Hello. How's it going? It's going. We're, we're hanging in there. I'm, I'm making a new sewing room, so I'm you know busy de de doing a major. It's um, the stuff that accumulates over the years. It's just really remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really unbelievable. So I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff. But what I wanted to ask you is in um, the joy quilt, the Nell's practical joy quilt. There's one block that says choose joy every day. Yeah. Is that available separately or is that with another block? Because I can't find it. That is part of block two. Block two, okay. I'll, I'll yeah. get block. Okay. Let, let me see. I thought let me that would be a lovely. I'm absolutely be, sure about that. The difficulty of my life right now, I thought that would be a good thing to put on my wall in my new sewing room. <laughs> you know, hold one second and hold that thought. One of these days, this is going to go up somewhere in my studio as that reminder. There you go. Yeah, we just stitched it up separately. I wound up putting a one inch binding around it to make it look more like it had a border. Okay. And it does have pipe binding as well, because we yep. always, 99% of the time it's gonna end up with a pipe binding purely because I do not do hand finishing. <laughs> but I love yeah. pipe, I like pipe binding, so I'm, I'm there. Um, They're so, so pretty, just, right? Just stitch that following the regular directions with the regular stitch and tear. And yep. Or tear, whatever yep. it's called. Exactly the same. Okay, great. Um, but okay. yes, it should, it should be in block two. Okay. Um, I'm having a bit of a, yes, it is. It's block two A. So okay. when you go into block two instructions, there is block two how to stitch it and then you'll also see block two a how to stitch it okay and you can i can purchase block two separately from the whole quilt correct yes okay yes you Great. can all right perfect thank you sarah have a good i hope you're having a, a good new year I'm, my life is getting a little easier although my hot water heater decided to quit not a couple of days ago but you know it's always something <laughs> there's always something but you got your new scan and cut right i did i like my new scan and cut and you like it i do good um, you know, but the hot water heater thing, you know, my husband was the one who always dealt with that stuff. And so now I'm having to make, you know, try to make these decisions. And I'm I'm not without some skills, but it's like, oh, it's, you know, the company won't warranty it because it was replacement. So that's only warrantied up until the warranty of the first one, which strikes me as being incredibly odd, but okay, fine. So and in some yeah. ways it's good because I can now pick whatever I want. I don't have to go with the same company. So. Good. Just you know, money. It's only money. Just takes money, as somebody used to say. <laughs> Hang in there. I am. I'm doing okay. Hang in there. 
and come join us every time we're here. I will, and I'm enjoy. You know, I'm enjoying it. Good. Well, it's Great. good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, sir. You are welcome. Okay. Let's see. We are. Um. Let me have a last little check. So, piped binding. What is a piped binding for Polly? It is this narrow little piping that is inserted between the binding and the quilt. I call it a no hands pipe binding. It gives that little extra wow factor to your projects. We use it on just about everything. I'm not sure if you can see it on the um, on the 3D quilt right here. There is actually right there, it is a pink piping in between the flying geese blocks and the border. Um, it's called a no hands pipe binding because there is absolutely no hand sewing involved. This is 100% done by machine. And that's what it looks like on the back. And that's what it looks like on the front. So we finish off nearly all of our quilts that way. I contemplated doing it on the piece wreath, um, going around in a circle and then decided to go with a candy cane, um, which I did finish on the machine just by making it that little bit bigger so that I could fold it and know that I had about an eighth of an inch to catch um, when I stitch in the ditch around the front. So, Okay, let's see. We are going to be back right here on um, two weeks from today. We're, 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 we have a schedule through that a whole year, first Friday and the third Friday. Um, don't actually know what the date is on the third Friday. 14 days from now, I guess the 19th, would that be right? Um, but anyway, make sure you've got the first Friday and the third Friday. We will be right here in the Meaning of Life Design Zoom room, and we will be streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. January 15th. No, that's not right. That's not. 19th. Yeah, January 19th. Marilyn's got some things going on in the chat here. Um, Sharon, how wide is your binding? On the candy cane one, it's about a quarter of an inch. On the joy thing, choose joy every day, we did an inch. So if you follow the instructions for um, for the no hands pipe binding, where you literally decide how big it's, how big you want it to be, multiply it by three, add an eighth, and multiply the whole thing by two. And that's how big you need to cut your um, your binding strips. Joe has a question. Hi. Oh. Hi. How's it going? Good. I just wanted, before we close today, I wanted to jump in and ask for prayers for Susie. Oh, goodness. Um, you know, she's the, one of the, one of the Q-tips and her husband is in a very, very, very bad way right now. So, you know, thank you for that. Joe. Need to be sent up to her. Yeah. We, so Susie's been in, I see, well, Susie hasn't, um, Jimmy, her, Susie's husband has been in ICU all through Christmas, right? I think he just went in probably ICU uh, last week, beginning of last week or the week before. But yeah, right yeah, after he, Christmas. Right, right after Christmas. So if you would send up a prayer for Susie and Jimmy, I'm absolutely certain that they would greatly appreciate it. Um, Susie has been really worried. And thank you, Joe, for reminding about that. Yeah, um, Susie is one of the Q-tips. She has been a super valued member of our community way back since 
before we started doing Zoom calls, she told she called me one day, or she emailed me one day, and she said, Sarah, it's been put in my heart that I need to be praying for you every day this year. And that was way back before we started doing Zoom. She's um, been super important in the growth of meaning of life design. So lots of prayers for her and Jimmy and beautiful healing for all of them and all of their family. Thank you, jo Joe. Okay. On that la last note, let's send lots of love out into the world. It goes out with every single stitch that we put into a project. And we then gift that project to somebody. Um, just know that it's every single stitch is sending that little bit of love out into the world. So go nurture your soul by putting the stitches in, knowing that they will be sending lots of love and healing energy out into the world as it's all happening. I'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye.